The other thing is that the people were ready. The people of Israel were ready for the Messiah to come at that time. It was the perfect time. God had prepared them well. See, they had come out of a 70-year exile back to Israel. The restoration to their own country. And you would think that they would be joyous about that. They built their wall. They had a temple. They were in their home country. And yet, they had the Romans ruling over them. The very thing that made it so that the message of the gospel could be spread to the whole world is what made the people of Israel upset. They were waiting for that Messiah to come and free them from the Romans. And the thing they didn't realize, that it wasn't just to get rid of the Romans, but to provide an opportunity for all to be saved. I'm very thankful about that. In the created order, God sent His Son. God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that they might receive the full rights of sons. Jesus Christ came into the world fully human, living as a human being. And there are many people in the world who have a hard time with that idea. Some people are offended by the idea that God would send His Son into the world. That they would say that God is not that cruel. That they would say there is no way that God would ever send His Son into the world. That's an offensive idea that God would do that. To dwell among us. There's no way. Because for some people, they have this idea that anything that is fleshly is bad. If it's alive, it's bad. If it's spirit, it's good. So why would God, who is good as spirit, send his son into the world human? Bad. They're offended by that idea. And for others, it's just ridiculous. Just a ridiculous idea that that, that would have to happen. That Jesus would have to come into the world to live under our laws. To live under the law created by God. His created order, the way that he had established things. But he had to come. To be the perfect sacrifice. A lamb of no blemish and effect. A man who was able to live a righteous life under the same conditions that we have. And he did it for us. He did it for us so that we might receive the full rights of sons. Now for those people who like to make inclusive language in their, in their scriptures when they do their translating, it would be a very bad idea to change that to sons and daughters or to children. Because then they wouldn't understand what the world in the first century was like. Right. The rights of sons, the inheritance rights, came to the sons. And Paul made a very important point in this too. Just earlier in this passage, there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. That right of sonship is to all who receive it. To all of us. Whether a slave or a lower class person, somebody working from paycheck to paycheck or on welfare checks, or people who have a trust fund that they're living on. No matter who you are, no matter what your station is in life, you have the rights of sons. That we have that ability to receive that Christmas present of sonship, that inheritance, those rights and responsibilities. We oftentimes have that confusion in our minds that rights, freedom, means we can do whatever we want. With those rights comes responsibilities because every day, as we go to Walmart, as we go to the mall, as we drive down the streets, as Christians, as sons, as children of God, we are representatives of God on earth. That when people see us, they should know that we are Christians. They should know that we belong 
to God the Father. Because you are sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts. The Spirit calls out, Abba, Father. And it's from this very verse here that the idea of asking Jesus into your heart comes. That Jesus may dwell with us, He may walk with us, and He may be that mediator for us, between us and the Father. That He may be with us in our hearts. And then when people see us when we're at Walmart or the mall or driving down the road, as we drive by the cop and look down at the speedometer, they should see Christ in us. Not us. Our whole world changes when we accept Jesus into our hearts. Because no longer should we be looking only to our own interests, to what's good for us. But we think and we consider how our actions will reflect on Jesus. How our actions will reflect on God the Father. So you're no longer a slave but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. That's such a wonderful Christmas present to each and every one of us. Merry Christmas.